So we must do two things, two great things together to encompass that enormous new view that lies before us, but to encompass it within the framework of science, to see it within the whole categorical framework of science, and to see that these two are not separate, but that they are wedded. The bigness of the idea, the newness of the idea, the greatness of it is one with the structure of science, the structure of being itself. So let's look at the subtone of mind as life. Where are we being taken in the flow of life? We are being brought near to the open source of all existence. Isn't that beautiful? It brings us nearer to the open source of all existence. God is love. Isn't that beautiful? I hear that as just a glorious declaration from the self-organizing principle, love, that says, I am love. I don't have to become love. I am love. Can we ask love to be more than love? Can we ask God to be more than love? Can we ask for more than a divine principle that is love? God is intelligence. Can we inform the infinite mind of anything he does not already comprehend? You just get such a, a full, rich, teeming sense that, of, the, of life <laughs> through love. That love and life are, are one thing. Love says, I'm life. I am. I, I'm all that there is. There can't be more. And you can't inform me of anything that I don't already know. I'm, I'm mind. That I comprehend everything. I can't do more. I can't be more. This is God's standard. This is the standard of the divine principle. And do we expect to change perfection? Hear how your prayer, how our prayer is being lined up with mind is mind, mind is spirit, mind is soul, mind is principle. And then we begin to see that it is able to demonstrate something of mind as life. That if we are lined up with those first four subtones, that we begin to see that the infinite one principle is pouring forth without limit, pouring itself forth without limit, pouring forth more than we accept. So to say you're only beginning to accept. Your acceptance is going to grow and grow and grow. Your Openness is going to grow and grow and grow until you are absolutely one with life itself. But she gives us the first touch of what life is in mind as life. And that touch is, is pretty big, isn't it? It's a pretty big touch. So shall we plead for more at the open fount? The fount is open. Are you open? <laughs> the fount is open. And pouring forth more than we accept. The unspoken desire, she falls back on the unspoken desire, and really shows that the unspoken desire, that true desire which is being molded and exalted, is dynamic. It does bring us nearer the source of all existence. 
and blessedness. So we have been taking the main tone of mind in the prayer chapter, and we have said that this first tone of mind presents the goal and the approach to the goal. So let's look at that through the subtones as we have seen them so far. We see that the subtone of mind, mind is mind, has shown us that the goal is the divine mind that already knows all. And that the way to the goal, the approach, is our desire to be willing to have our thoughts molded by this mind and exalted by this mind. That as spirit, the goal is the fact that God reflects himself in blessing. And the way to the goal is to have pure motives, the one pure motive really, embracing all pure motives, is our hungering after righteousness. In mind as soul, the picture of the goal, that ideal, is that God being is unchangeable. And the way to the goal is our humble and fervent willingness to be changed as principle, mind as principle. We see that the goal is the science of being itself and that the way to the goal is to come into harmony with the science of being. As life then, that looking at the goal from the standpoint of life, we see that life is the source of all existence and that our way to the goal is to draw from the eternal open source of life, to accept that flow of life. So we come to the truth Tone, mind is truth, I should say the truth subtone in mind. We're still talking about this prayer of mind, and as truth, we see in our epitome that it acknowledges that God does right without giving him advice. So, truth, as truth often does, as actually truth always does, falls back on life in order to say something about truth. Truth must always fall back on life. And so the tone begins, asking God to be God is a vain repetition. Asking God to be God is empty. It's an empty repetition. You see that a repetition is a petition that we repeat, the repeating of a petition, but it's a vain repetition, so it is empty. There is no cybernetic quality within it. God is the same yesterday and today and forever. And now truth, the truth aspect comes in having drawn what it is from the fact of life and says, and he who is immutably right, I hear that divine principle, love, that divine cybernetic principle, love, which is immutably right, will do right. So we have the rightness of truth and the doing of that which is right without being reminded of his province without reminding God of what he not only is supposed to be, but what he should be doing. The wisdom of man is not sufficient to warrant him in advising God. So our wisdom is not sufficient to, 
to justify us. That's what the term warrant means, that we cannot find justification for advising God, that there is nothing that would ever justify us in telling God what to be or to do. And so our true desire must be to acknowledge God as he is, namely as immutably right. Always doing right. What is it that always does right? It's the calculus, isn't it? Whenever you have a, a doing, a being and a doing, this is the calculus in operation, the cyber needer in operation, the cybernetic divine principle is always continually, eternally doing and being right. So we come naturally in the flow to mind as love. And this is the a point at which we find the attractor in the field of the mind tone. You see that in the matrix that we've come to love as a mind as love to the attractor in the field of the mind main tone. And we see that prayer at this point is the willingness to avail ourselves of this divine rule and that this enables us to work out our salvation as God's work is already done. Let's read the text and then we can talk about the epitome and the substance of it. Who would stand before a blackboard and pray the principle of mathematics to solve the problem. The rule is already established. The rule is already established. What rule is established? Mind, spirit, soul. What do... Yeah, all right. Well, these are all good and they're all related to each other. The, as the goal, but there is a, a, yeah, all right. If we fall back on just what we have seen so far in the mind tone, what rule have we been given? Yes, we've been given the nature. We've been shown now, uh, coming to the point of love, we have been shown the whole nature in some aspect, haven't we? And so she says, this is the rule. I've actually given you a rule. In, the, in this tone of mind, she has given us a rule and says, and it is our task to work out the solution. And so it is showing us that we can't stand before that blackboard, we can't stand before our model of being or our matrix and, and just say, oh, please, now, uh, I know this works and I know you're God and, and please now, just do the following and be the following. But our response is an active response. It's really asking for the activity of mind within us, isn't it? The action of mind within us, in a sense, to rest in the rule, if you want to say that. To rest in the rule of mind is to be active in that rule. She says, shall we ask the divine principle of all goodness to do his own work? His work is done. And I hear that level of divine science of asking, oh, asking the divine principle of all goodness to do his work again. His work, what do you hear when you hear his work? I hear the calculus. Mm -hmm. huh? 
be the calculus, asking principle to be the calculus and to do something is, it's a vain repetition because his work is done. That eternal cybernetic round is already at the point of fulfillment, the point of perfection. And we have only to avail ourselves of God's rule. He actually mentions that rule twice in that paragraph. She says the rule is established and we have only to avail ourselves of God's rule. What happens if we avail ourselves of God's rule? We receive his blessing, which enables us to work out our own salvation. So now I want to remind you of something I told you earlier this week, and that is that they say that a dynamic living system has a rule. Remember that? <laughs> that the de definition to define what a dynamic living system is, they say, remember that you have to have first a manifold, and we said that manifold is the plane or the dimension within which all the possibilities of the system lie. But in addition to the manifold, you must have a rule. So you have all possibilities which the system can undergo. But the rule is that which gives you the vector field with the attractor in it. So the rule gives you the vector field. And what, what is the vector field that we see here? What is the rule that we've been given? The rule is the word order, isn't it? the word order, the sevenfold nature of God in its word order, and the attractor in the field is love. And you remember that I said that it is the rule that tells the system, go here. And then when it gets there, it says, now go here. And the system arrives there and it says, now go here, see? And the movement from the initial point to the attractor or the fulfillment of it is called the vector field. And at the, uh, at the conclusion of the vector field lies the attractor. And this is the word order. Yeah, isn't that terrific? And here she says, and I've given you the rule. You have the rule for how to become a dynamic, complex, adaptive, living system of consciousness. And all you have to do is avail yourself of that rule. Avail yourself of the rule. So that would mean to what? To go back to mind is mind, mind is spirit, mind is soul, mind is principle, mind is life, mind is truth, mind is love, and then you arrive at mind is love, it says, avail yourself of the rule. So you go back again, <laughs> and you go through the rule again, and it's a closed loop, isn't it? Because every time you reach the attractor in that field, it sends you back, but when you go back, you're inputting completely new information, right? So it's a cybernetic process. I should be going this way huh, for you, that you come to, uh, you come to the point of mind is love, and mind is love says, 
this is a rule avail yourself of it go back then you go back again then you come around says go back again go back again so you are in that cybernetic flow that dynamic flow and each time you go back you take with you new output don't you at the at the point of input then as, as mind is mind you have the output from the previous availing of the rule this is really our life this is our life and so you are availing yourself of his blessings the divine cybernetic blessings and that's the working out of your salvation i had uh, someone look up salvation in the glossary uh, because i just recalled that it had to do with life truth and love and salvation is defined as life truth and love understood and demonstrated as supreme above all that's what we work out with the rule sin sickness and death destroyed <laughs> yes i mean those, those, that one sentence is we can go home <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, you avail yourself of that rule and avail yourself of that rule and avail yourself of the rule. And this is no longer mind. It is spirit. you have become auto catalytic can you see that huh? you are going back to you are reflecting on that which you have been given you have been given the rule what does it mean to avail yourself of it it means to to make use of it to put it to good use put it to the use of good actually the use of spirit and the moment you go back to it and reflect on it and we said that you take the output of having it, the first output is that you have the rule and then you input really what you know about the rule back in it's uh it's an iterating process that you take that calculation and you feed it back in on itself and this is auto catalytic because it keeps growing and growing and grow <laughs> like the energizer bunny keeps going and going and going but here it is keep we, that we keep growing and growing as as we as it turns as that consciousness turns back on itself isn't that beautiful that that brings us to spirit